Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation. Uh, I'm Dr. Anna M from Caritas Institute of Higher Education from Hong Kong. The topic of my presentation is perspective of secondary school students on school-based sex education, sexuality education, effects of demographic characteristics. This project is uh, sponsored by the funding awarded by the Hong Kong University Grants Committee. For secondary school students, these are adolescents experiencing physical as well as psychological changes. So they become active in exploring sexuality as well as engaging in sexual relationships. The adolescents in secondary school, um, their sex attitudes are more permissive in recent years. And then uh, it is fine that uh, they involve in risky sexual behaviors. These are findings from the literature. And then the unplanned pregnancy, or they also experience illegal abortion. And the negative consequence um, for these uh, risky sexual behavior is uh, um, causing uh, sexual and psychological health problems. For school-based sexuality education, um, we hope the education can provide accurate sexual information as well as foster correct sexual attitudes. So the efficacy of SDSE is, um, we hope um, a proper SDSE can help delay initiation of intercourse, effective use of contraceptive methods, and reduce unintended pregnancy as well as develop healthy relationships. And after all, we find that the efficacy of school-based sexuality education depends on students' attitude. And that's why in our study, we study, the objective of our study is to study students' attitude towards school-based sexuality education, and also their appraisal of sexual topics. So how do they find the need to study topics? as well as uh, their comfort about talking certain sexual attitudes. And what are the effects of demographic characteristics on these two items, the attitude towards SBSC, as well as their appraisal of sexual topics? So first of all, the attitude towards SDS, the scale uh, consists of eight items. It's a four point scale and um, the range of score is 8 to 32, and the midpoint is 20. Appraisal of sexual topics, AOST, the scale, there are 22 items, and uh, we ask the need for learning as well as the comfort in learning about these topics. So score um, ranges is from 22 to 110, and then number one, Score one means not at all, there's no need for learning, or not at all comfortable. And five is extremely, there's need for learning as well as extremely comfortable for learning. So the higher the score, the higher the need, and then higher the score, and then the greater the comfortability. Um, and then, so these are some topics, the five areas of sexual topics, And you can see we have human development topics and then um, health and behavior topics, including you know, sexual tensions, coping, and then birth control, and then pornography materials as far well as uh, STD and masturbation as far well as unplanned pregnancy and abortion. And area three is interpersonal relationship. And then we can see it's about the dating and boy-girl relationship, love and infatuation, sexual abuse of violence, and hetero or homo sexuality. And marriage and family include premarital sex, preparation of family, family intergeneration relationship, and area five is related to society and culture. We have sexual, uh, sexual, gender role, as well as basic values of sexuality. And schools of, um, attitude towards SBSE as well as their appraisal of sexual topics. 
um, as you can see, the midpoint, the score, the mean score in all aspects is higher than the midpoint. That means the attitude is rather positive. And then they show the need for learning as well. They find that it's quite comfortable to talk about the sex topics, at least above the midpoint, right? And then the significance of gender differences in attitude towards SBSE items, as you can see. Well, you can see the female students rate higher all these, uh, um, I mean, their score uh, towards uh, as SBSC is higher or the, they had their, their attitude towards SBSC is more positive than the male students because in every area, you know, their score is higher. And what about the significance effects of age and education then? As you can see here, for the age higher than 16, they score higher. And then for senior forms, they also score higher than the junior forms. And then we find that and in fact, uh, higher education plays a more important role than age or appraisal of sex topics. So it's not just about the age, but it's about the level of education. And gender difference in overall appraisal of sexual topics. As you can see, there's not much difference. Male and female students are similar. They're all higher than the midpoint. What about the greatest need of learning? The top seven topics, we find that from the male students, they have, uh, you know, um, the greatest need are sexual abuse, uh, violence issues, coping with sexual tension or basic values in sexuality, as well as self-image and self-understanding. So these topics, are also being um, found in the female rating here. So these are the repeated topics in black color. And then the blue color are the topics which is not found in, uh, uh, not commonly found in male and female students. So this one's STD is found uh, way to see for male, but not in female. And love infatuation also important for male, but it rates just number six for female part of students, they high the rate is so high. Number second, second greatest need is love and infatuation. The male is rating at number six. And then adolescence emotion is found as a greatest need for male partners, but for male students, but not for female. Female, we kind of find these items in the top number seven, but female inches or the greatest needs about premarital sex as well as reproductive system. As you know, by common sense, we know that uh, female students, maybe they're more concerned about their own body, right? Because the pregnancy is related to their own body. So they find that they have a higher rates about the need of learning compared with the male student. And what about the gender difference in items of need for learning? Uh, we rate again and to check uh, overall rating, we find that in fact, there is uh, statistically some difference um, for male and female students. Uh, as you can see, the physical change of puberty, pornography, masturbation, and wet dream are of um, greater need of learning for male students. And for female, uh, the difference, you can see, they rate premarital sex as well as dating, true love, and infatuation as having higher or greater need of learning for female students. about the comfort? How do they rate about the topics to be uh, learned when they learn these topics? What about their sense of uh, or degree of comfort? For the male, you know, uh, as you can see, uh, they find that um, for pornography, masturbation, self-image, self-understanding, primary success as dating and love and infatuation is having a uh, higher, score higher in terms of comfort. Uh, in learning than the female students, okay? And then for the um, uh, family life generation relationship, as well as heterosexual and homosexual, bisexual and menstruation. And for these topics, the female is scoring higher, okay? Oh, excuse me, uh, one more, one typo here, uh, this one. 
This one also female is uh, rating higher, okay? Dating, love and infatuation, it should be here. We should type it as the red one. And this one for male partner is not as high as the female. Okay, sorry for the typo. And let's go to um, the general, you know, the limitations of the findings. Uh, of course, uh, we find that this is uh, the convenient sampling and then we cannot um, generalize the finding to other population, right? And then um, for the attitude towards SDSE, we use the global measure. So the effect of religion is not being reflected. So we just ask them whether um, they find these topics, uh, how to define the topics. But then there are some um, specific items related to abortion or contraception. And these items, if uh, they have uh, religion uh, with religious background, probably uh, the findings may be different. And then uh, to conclude, uh, the consistence of Western findings uh, compared uh, our finding with the Western findings, we find the students were supportive um, of SDSE. So that means the youngsters in the secondary schools, they support school-based sex education. And the inconsistence in our finding compared with uh, the literature is that uh, girls or female, they, are, they show more uh, support towards SDSE. So in the Western culture, we find that male is more supportive towards SDSE. And then for students' need for learning and comfort uh, in learning about sex topics, um, we find that um, when we discover that uh, uh, male and female, how do they find uh, their need, the rates, the need of learning or their comfort about learning the sex topics, these findings can help us to facilitate uh, the sexual education, the design of sex education programs. And then, um, of course, when we do the uh, sex education, uh, the year of study, as well as gender differences in the appraisal of sex uh, topics um, um, should be taken into account because uh, we find that there's a gender difference in, these, uh, in the AOST. Okay, thank you. This is our presentation. Thank you.